This video will cover the basics of doing sections and elevations in AutoCAD architecture. When I say that, I mean using AutoCAD architecture for purposes of BIM, where you have a three-dimensional model of your building and you're pulling sectional information and elevation information from that model. Now, keep in mind, in order to use this feature, you really have to be um, more thorough about modeling a lot of the components of the building in three dimensions than you might otherwise. There's a lot of companies that use AutoCAD architecture for purposes of doing their plans, and then they still use regular 2D sections and elevations that they draw by hand. And that's not necessarily a wrong way to do it, but it doesn't take advantage of having that three-dimensional information um, that you're getting by using the wall, door, and window tools in AutoCAD architecture. So in this particular file, I already have it set up as a three-dimensional model. I have uh, slabs added, roofs, um, the walls and doors are all set up. The, I have two floors stacked one on top of the other, as you can see there. So then when I cut the sections and elevations, they'll be relatively similar to what I would normally want. A lot of times, the uh, one of the nice things about doing the section this way is that it will point out things that you need to adjust or correct so that it is correct three-dimensionally. So I don't expect this to be a perfect section when I'm done with it but that will red flag things that I do need to correct in three dimensions so that I'll know uh, where I need to make adjustments. I'm going to use the annotate tab on the ribbon and then there's a callouts panel for your section tools and elevation tools. You also have the option to use the tool palette. Right now I'm in the design category so I'm going to change to the document category of tool palettes and then you have callouts tab with your section tools and elevation tools there. Even though the tab is called callouts, you can use these tools to actually create the sections in the same way that you would from the ribbon. So I'm going to do a elevation first because it's just a little bit easier and then we'll go back and do a section. When you hit the elevation button there is a little arrow there to give you a flyout and you can see your various options for doing elevations. The elevation symbol that's first is a very simple one. It works fine but I usually prefer the options that include a sheet number in the tag because when you do sections and elevations it's going to create the tag for you and you'd want the sheet number in that tag rather than just a drawing call out by itself. So I'm going to do elevation sheet number as my particular tool there. Uh, keep in mind because this is going to create the tag in the process of doing the drawing you would want your annotation scale to be correct down at the lower right so that the tag is created at the proper scale. So I'm doing my net quarter scale because that's the scale of what my plan would be printed at. But you'd want to think about that and set that correctly the first uh, step before you start your tool. So now I have to drop the symbol for whichever elevation I want to show first. So I'm going to click here. And then I have to pick which direction to look. So I'm going to point it at the building by moving my mouse to the left and clicking again. After that, it goes directly to this dialog box. And then you have a couple important things to think about. The first is, do you only want an elevation tag symbol? If that's the case, then you hit the call out only button right at the top. If you're actually trying to create an elevation drawing, then you would want to go down to the bottom half of this box and you can pick a current drawing if that's where you want it to be for this new elevation that's going to be created. Um, before I do that, I'm going to change the scale here. Um, because it's going to also place a title mark under the elevation and I would want that to be more like a quarter scale rather than eighth. So again, think about your intended print scale prior to making the drawing. If you forget, you can always fix it afterwards. So I'm going to hit current drawing and then that's going to create my elevation in this file. So now specify first corner of elevation region. It's basically asking what do you want to include in your elevation drawing. So I'm going to put a window around everything in my project. And it has placed that line based upon that front edge of that rectangle that I just selected. So that's your elevation line that you can use later if you want to adjust where that elevation is being taken from. Now the command line says, specify insertion point for the 2D elevation. So where do I want to put the new drawing? So I'm going to click over here to the side and then it processes for a few seconds and then it gives you the result, the elevation view of that side of the building. 
So that's the basics of doing an elevation. If I wanted to do all four, I would just repeat that three more times. This is your title mark again at the bottom that was created at the scale that I had selected in that dialog box. If I forgot to do that, I can always change the annotation scale by selecting that symbol and then using the properties palette or the ribbon or the right click menu in the same way that I've taught you in some of my other videos. The elevation is still an intelligent elevation drawing. So if I make a change or need it to update, I can do that. Let's say I decide that I don't want this window anymore, hypothetically. So we don't need that. Now I can select the elevation and then hit refresh in my ribbon. And then it's going to take that window out. So that's the real advantage to using these um, smart tools in AutoCAD architecture compared to drafting an elevation by hand is the ability to update it quickly when changes occur. Um, because anybody that's worked in a design firm or architecture firm now knows how often that happens. I just hit undo to make that uh, window come back in the elevation view and then undo until the window comes back on my plan. Now, if I um, needed to include additional objects, like maybe I forgot to put a window in, um, I would throw the window into the plan. And then if I refresh the elevation, that's not necessarily going to show that because it's an additional new object that was not previously selected when I did that window around all the objects in my project. So if I wanted to include additional information rather than just changes, I would go up to regenerate rather than refresh. So those are two very important options. Regenerate will bring you back to this dialog box to where you can select additional objects to be included. So if I added a window, I would hit select additional objects. I could now select that window and then uh, hit enter or space or right click to come back to this setting. And then I hit OK and then, and then it would update. I haven't made any change, so it's not showing anything different. Uh, but that's how you would add additional objects. And now the surface pattern that you see here um, is being pulled from the wall style, which is a masonry wall style that I've used on the plan. So if you wanted that to change, you would edit your wall style, uh, the display properties of the materials. And uh, I will cover editing display properties in another video. So that's how the pattern is being assigned to this drawing. Now, a lot of times it's necessary to tweak this a little. Like maybe I don't really want to see that slab at the bottom kind of extending out. I can select my elevation and then go to edit and that takes me into where I can actually delete these and they won't be in the way anymore. I can also delete that seam where I have my second floor of the building stacked on top of the first floor. And then now I can hit finish and then it has taken those lines out. Obviously um, you would not want to take out that line at the seam if you're using the concrete block pattern because now it looks very odd uh, to be missing that seam uh, since my hatch doesn't work anymore. Um, but I was going to theoretically change the hatch anyway, so then it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, and again, I'll cover that in a separate video. So that's the basics of doing an elevation. Uh, I will also do an additional video on editing elevations in more advanced ways. Uh, the other thing I want to show quickly in this video is cutting a section. And the reason that I'm doing it in the same video is because it's really the same process of doing the elevation. So I'm going to hit my section tool and then again choose the one with the sheet number. So now the main difference here is that uh, when you click, you're not putting your section outside the building. You're cutting the section across the building. That's the whole point of what a section is, is you're cutting through part of the building either longitudinally or in a transverse manner in order to show the construction and the insides of what's going on. That's what a section is all about. So if I wanted to cut across the stair and do a building section, I would click two points on opposite sides to represent my section line that cuts across the plan that way. So again, it's like you're cutting uh, through the building with a chainsaw. And you have the option to continue clicking more points. Uh, usually you don't need to do that unless you want to jog to section. So then you would hit enter or space to move on or right click to move on to the next step. So 
start your tool, click only two points usually, and then hit enter or right click to move on. Now it's asking at the command line, specify section extents. In other words, how much stuff do I want to be included again? I can also flip it to look toward the right or look toward the left. So I can decide what direction I want that section to view uh, the construction. So I'm going to go toward the left and put my rectangular shape around the uh, remainder of the building just to make sure I get everything included. This is the same options. I can choose my scale and I can either drop a symbol only or I'm going to do current drawing to create the section of this drawing and then I click where I want to place that. And then it processes and then it shows my building section. So again, uh, you would have to now clean up any three dimensional issues. For example, on my second floor, I don't have a railing that I would need and I need to fix um, the upper part of this second floor where there's no ceiling and you know, there's no, uh, uh, the wall needs to either be extended up or add a ceiling across the whole thing. So there's always little issues like that that you go and clean up afterwards. But that's the basics of doing the section. So now when you uh, have the section mark and the elevation mark, uh, you need to update those um, when they're shown on a plan so that the call out relates to where that section occurs. So that's kind of standard practice for doing architectural drawings. Whatever sheet number the section is going to be shown on would get filled in in your call out. And then whatever view number this is identified as, such as um, drawing A, hypothetically, on that sheet, that's what would go here in your view number. So then that's drawing A. So now whoever's reading the plan will know what sheet to go to find the section on and then which drawing on that sheet relates to this particular section line. So that's kind of the concept of that. So that's the basics. Again, uh, keep your eyes peeled later for some additional videos to get into deeper editing of these types of drawings.